The Noxy and Cax Show with Liz Knox and Kara L. M. Ard. <laughs> Let's get it. Go. Hello, hockey fans. You're listening to The Noxy and Cax Show. Second episode coming at you live, brought to you by the PWHPA and SDPN. I'm Liz Knox. Joining me in Montreal, Carol Amard. And today we're so fortunate to have three-time U.S. Olympian, two-time Clarkson Cup winner, former PWHPA member. The list really goes on and on. In, in terms of women's hockey, this is somebody who's done it all. Recently retired. So fortunate to have you on. Casey Bellamy. Woo! That's when Thanks, the- guys. Really appreciate it. How are you? I'm great. Um, I'm excited you guys got this podcast up and running. And when you asked me to be on it, I was honored. So I'm excited. Oh, it's fun. You were uh, part of my, uh, I was like, Maxi, we got to get Casey on this. There's no doubt we're going to get good stories. We're going to get a good vibe from this. I was just pumped uh, for you to share a little bit more with our listeners. So glad you're on and glad you accepted. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it. Okay. So let's jump right in. Give us a quick update. what the last year has been like since you retired uh i guess it was like last spring ish yeah it was in may i made i knew it was happening kind of right after the world championships got canceled so my birthday april 22nd um i kind of thought about making that decision and it's been great um knew i wanted to move on with the next chapter in my life years and years of training and hockey and mentally and physically. It's just, I I knew my time was, was up and I knew it was a decision that I wasn't going to take lightly and that I really wanted to think about. And the hardest part was telling my mom, if anyone knows my mother, (laughs) that is so sweet. And to this day, she's like, are you still sure that you made the right decision? I'm like, yes, mother. I I'm very (laughs) sure, but it's been great. Um, I'm working, Uh, In Amesbury, Massachusetts, there's a big athletic complex being built, and I am the director of athletic development there. And basically, all the lessons that I learned and my coworkers who are ex-NHL guys, lessons they learned, we want to instill them starting at a young age because, in my opinion, the mental is all of it. And if you're doubting yourself one bit, 1%, then you're not going to be the player that you can be. I love it. I love that. And then uh, I'm going to say hi to Maura right here. Um, <laughs> Casey's mom. Uh, I know how much she loved watching you and everything. And, and to that point, you said that like you made the decision uh, right after Worlds got canceled in Halifax. Uh, I remember texting you and being like, but why? And what's going on? And the, what do you mean? It's going to get postponed and just like wondering. And, and I thought you had uh, one of the greatest answer and, and uh, you mentioned it or alluded to it like it was time. But can you just let you know, the listeners know like why you did that and why not going to the one in uh, Calgary for one last one? Yeah, honestly, it, like I said, it was a decision that I thought about. And when it came down to it, it was really one thing that made the decision. And it was the girls kind of before me that, you know, haven't made it or they're trying to make it. I, I really felt as though if, you know, my heart wasn't fully in it, it wasn't right. And I, it would give another girl a chance to reach her dreams and perfect example. Look at Jincy Dunn. She's been centralized. She's made, um, all these teams trying out, but, um, kind of really didn't solidify herself yet on the national team and look at, she's on her first Olympics and it's just an amazing, incredible story. And, um, little things like that. I thought about always in the back of my mind, this is going to be an ability to someone else to reach their dreams. That's what makes you, you. Yeah. I was just going to say that gave me goosebumps. Like that's, that's the kind of quality that you want in a teammate. So let's bring it back to where it all started. You mentioned your mom, you grew up in Westfield mass. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So talk us through a little bit about what it was like growing up in your family, maybe what your siblings, uh, you know, you guys play hockey together, the influence of your family. And, uh, and then we'll get to a little bit of a family tradition in a second, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, um, we grew up, I, we were actually born uh, in Rhode Island and my uncles were playing hockey at the time. So my parents got us into the sport. Um, my parents didn't, my mom didn't play any sports, but she likes to think that she played every single sport. Um, my dad <laughs> played basketball and football and he's very athletic, but hockey was just never in that family gene. So our uncles were the ones that kind of got us in it. And uh, my brothers and I played, I have two brothers and one sister and um, all growing up, we're playing pond hockey, playing street hockey. 
um, whenever we got home from school all the way till dark, we were just outside and living and loving life. And we were competitive. I mean, I think, think? That that, I think that that's why <laughs> I, I fell in love with the game was the competition. And that's the reason I continued to play for so long. Just waking up on that Canada versus USA, it's just the best feeling ever. And so I think at a young age, I I learned and inherited the competition and the competitive nature inside of me and my family. And it just, it grew from there every single year. I love it. You, you're saying, and you're chirping your mom a little saying that she's not the athletes or didn't play any sports, but I bet you she's the one that brought that competitiveness in all of you guys pretty much and making you work the hardest and the hardworking type of family. I absolutely love both your parents and uh, your siblings. And uh, one thing that I got uh, requests pretty much today uh, by Kat Serby was to ask you, <laughs> Miss Casey Bellamy, about a little bit of a family appetizer that you guys came up with. And um, pretty much is a block of cream cheese with <laughs> HB sauce on top of it. Tell me where it's coming from and why. And I know it has nothing to do with the family and competitiveness that we were talking about. But what the heck is that? And I know. And you were one of like the first friends that I actually introduced <laughs> it to because you were lucky enough to come to Westfield for Thanksgiving with the Bell. You're right. Movies. Thank you. Thank <laughs> yes. you, Bells. But Thank you to Bellamy family for hosting and having me for American Thanksgiving. I appreciate it. Years and years ago. Years and <laughs> Once years about years. a time. Um, but my grandmother, they, they had it in their family every Thanksgiving or every you know holiday. That would be an appetizer. A block of Philadelphia cream <laughs> cheese with A1 sauce or HP sauce, whatever, on top. A1. I think you're right. <laughs> and the little Melba snacks that you kind of spread on there and it's it's gold i mean okay I time know. out time out is the cream cheese a little bit soft so i can dip i can't remember melted? okay yeah, it's not melted it's just like you take it out and you can use a knife i mean it's the most unhealthy thing i've ever seen but <laughs> when you're having it on a holiday and it's an appetizer it's something you look forward to like twice a year Absolutely. That's amazing love yeah. that family tradition <laughs> okay so let's talk then a little bit uh you know, after you went to what, what school did you go to again for university? No, no, no. Before university. Uh, Berkshire? Berkshire Berkshire. Okay. So after Berkshire, cause we got to shut them out, you know, um, you went oh, to UNH yeah. 2005 to 2009. Um, maybe before we get into the very special celebration that you had this year, what was kind of the identity of UNH at the time? T like take our listeners back to what kind of team you were you know, what was the characteristics? Were you guys a playoff team? Walk us through a little bit of your four years there. Yeah, I think, man, when UNH, when I first committed there, they were middle of the pack hockey East. And the main reason I committed to UNH was because I, I was playing with a player that I just met the year before, Sam Faber. And I thought that she was unbelievably talented. Like I, I, I never saw a player come in of this caliber before. And we just, we meshed like the passing. She was a, a winger. So she would always go and I'd do the stretch pass with her. And this was during like our club games. So when she committed to UNH, I said, this is a no brainer. I feel like we can really help elevate this program. And then um, there was another girl, Maggie Joyce that committed and then a girl from Scotland. So we only had four freshmen, but there was so much skill and talent on that team. My freshman year, we made it to the frozen four and I, I think we went undefeated or not undefeated, but I think we won like 30 games or something and then lost um, in the semifinal game to Minnesota because we didn't play a team of that caliber all year. And then we go mm -hmm. up University of Minnesota home ice and we just get our butts kicked like five, nothing. I think Sarah Bauer <laughs> had like four goals in the game. And I go, who is this girl? <laughs> Cause we never play the WCHA, right? We're like yeah. hockey East and we play ECA AC. And um, I just think at that time it was a little overwhelming for our program, but then the next year after that, we were unbelievable. Um, but the chemistry on the team wasn't as good. So we didn't make it um, as far but I'd have to say um, UNH was really put on the map during those the four years. And it was just a remarkable journey there. I loved it so much. Um, the coach was great. Brian McCloskey taught me so much about defense and like the systems and the technical and tactical side of the game. And I really 
I think he groomed me into the defenseman that I kind of became for the national team. So I, I was so happy with my decision and I still keep in contact with a lot of the girls. Sammy Faber actually coaches at UNH now. So we've seen each other a few times and it's like we're home again. Oh, that's awesome. You guys are like a package deal then. Right. But you need to tell her that we never hang out. Like <laughs> as I always ask her to hang out and she bails on me. So <laughs> That's good. And then uh, to that extent, yeah. too, uh, we well, gotta start- call out the podcast. Enough's enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> call her out. <laughs> <laughs> gotta do it. And and on that note, too, like, okay, so you were there from 2005 to 2009. You kind of mm-hmm. started the whole national deal in 2006, 06, I think, right? Like, yeah. holy. So, sophomore, like, did you change anything in your college, like, kind of like behaviors or where you were going about? Or what kind of like journey you were on from freshman to like seniors, or did that kind of like snap into reality? Okay, I, I have a chance to make this team and I want to make this team. Maybe even after playing Sarah Bauer, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, totally. And I I didn't even think about the national team. I mean, I did. It was a dream of mine, but I go to UNH, I'm focused on UNH, right? I'm focused right. on that team. Um, I got invited to under 22. I think it was like my freshman year, but I was cut from that team. So that was really tough. So my beginning journey with USA hockey was um, a little rocky, but I faced a lot of adversity at that time, which I think made my success meant even more just because I had to learn a lot of lessons young in my career and going from college to under 22 being cut. And then two months later, I'm on the four nations national senior team (laughs) Don't even know. I'm speechless. Right. Like, I'm (laughs) okay. I'm with Julie Chu and Andrew Rajiro. I'm like, awesome. Like nobody even knows me, but I'm going to come and try and play and do my best. And it was just from then on, I I never was cut again until I retired. So it was just this incredible journey of seeing it from the rookie coming in and all the way up to when I was the oldest person on the team. Well, clearly you left your mark at UNH because they honored you this year by naming November 13th, Casey Bellamy day. So what was that whole experience like for you? It was very special. Uh, just because of COVID they've asked me back a few times and I was in Calgary, obviously. Uh, so I wasn't able to get back to an age. So this year, since I got a job around the area, they made it a point to bring me in and kind of recognize, um, the accomplishments throughout my career. And it was amazing being able to see all the people that have worked there in the past when I was at UNH and the coaching staff and Hillary Witt was my coach in 2014 for the Olympic team and uh, for her to be at UNH. It it was very special. And it it was just my family came and everyone was able to see, um, you know, the rink and just bringing back memories. That's what it's all about. Like you're back home. I was back home and it just the feeling in your heart it's, it's just the best. I mean, time goes on and it's not going to stop, but you can always go back and reflect on those amazing memories that you had. That's a wonderful Mm -hmm. feeling. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So after college, right, obviously a touted career at UNH and now you're in the national team program. So you've got all these good things going for you. Now we're going to talk about the state of professional women's hockey, because Mm -hmm. obviously we're here representing the PWHPA. What the U.S. national team did in 2017 to boycott the world championship, basically asking for equality in your contracts, kind of, I would like to say, as somebody who, you know, was here in the beginning of the PA, kind of set a bar for us and our stance to say, okay, hang on a second, like, we can ask for more. Case, you were, you played in the CWHL, you also played in what was the NWHL, and then you finished off playing the PA. So obviously you're here to take a stand for the game. What was it, you know, without being, you know, malicious, what was it that was missing from pro women's hockey after you graduated at UNH? How much time do we have? To be honest, (laughs) where do you start? But at at the same time, it all comes down to care, in my opinion. Um, There's so much I could go down the list of how my day to day went with me and my teammates playing in these leagues and you're waking up at five in the morning, going to a 6 a.m. practice with five people because that's the only time we could practice or you're practicing at 8 p.m. at night and getting to bed at midnight because you can't settle down. Um, You're bringing your laundry home and you're you're doing your undergear and you're airing out your equipment in the back of your car. Like, come on, let's let's 
let's be better. Um, you don't have a locker room. You don't know what rink you're practicing at this week or what game arena looks like for, you know, that game. So it's, it's so many things that all for me bundles up to just care and awareness and, you know, men's hockey. I, I can't, it's tough to compare, but we have to compare one of the least skilled men in the NHL makes $900,000. And we were lucky to even get maybe two to $5,000 to play. I mean, things like that, I, it's beyond me. And I know that we're trying to grow this and make this movement. And we're doing such a phenomenal job over the past five years. And I do believe that the boycott in 2017 really jump started that. Absolutely. But it's about, it's about unity, right? It's about having the right leaders, having the right people, having the right delivery, having the right plan, put it into place and let's get shit done. Yeah. You know, let's <clears throat> like, let's stop talking about it and let's put more action, you know? Yep. Yeah. I love that. I think, I think in, in 2017, like when you guys did that to the group that you had was like, I would say probably one of the most united, uh, group, uh, on the national level. Um, and then from hearing the plan and what you had in mind and when you're going to post and it's like <sighs> worlds, uh, whoa, sorry, my dog, uh, it's world on like us like soil and, and you're about to boycott it and the impact that that was going to have, like talk about action right there. And And we're all kind of going either like we're in the area from recruiting as coaches or, or we want to just go and watch and, and hearing that I feel like, um, and on top of it, you guys won. So I, ha I have to give it to you, <laughs> us, I have to give it to you, but like seeing it all go from putting it all on the line, truly, mm -hmm. literally, like we're not playing, we're going to be, we might get caught. Like, this is it. Like, but if we're united, the 24 of us might be harder. And I remember if you guys don't remember this, they went and recruited anyone in division yeah. one and anyone in division three and anyone in their grandma, pretty much. And everyone else in the world of women's hockey said, no, there's a couple yeah. people that were like, okay, maybe, but talk about unity right there. It was like the movement started right then. And not only was it just the 25, 28 or however, whoever was on that team that year, but everyone else felt it. Coaches around women's hockey, around men's hockey also felt it. Like it was, um, I don't want to keep bragging about it, but I think <laughs> like that was to me, like the action plan that maybe the PA took uh, and wanted to push women's hockey to the next level. And this is why we see, you know, stuff coming out for the other leagues that are, are committing to do more for it. Right. And it starts from there. And, and do we settle for this? No, we want more but we're not asking too much either. Like I want yeah. people to also understand that side of things. Like um, what the state of women's hockey is in is not that is not where it was, where we were maybe drying our equipment and our cars and, and stuff, but it's still yeah. not at the standards. It's not quite where we need it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. And, and, and yeah, the 2017 team and you guys, what you did, the boycott, if you guys didn't hear about it, listeners, Uh, I think it was the, the kind of like the element that started again oh, for, for all of us. Yeah. And to yeah. quote the great, remember the Titans attitude reflects leadership. And that's exactly what you guys did, right? You set the bar. Okay. This is too much serious talk. <laughs> Let's go to, you moved to Calgary because why wouldn't you? You're <laughs> like a stud on the U S national team. And I'm just going to plug myself right in the center of Calgary where the Canadian girls centralized, but tell us about that. Tell about, about your decision and kind of your experience in Calgary. Um, you loved it. Loved every <laughs> second I was in Calgary. Um, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Uh, Banff. I, I don't know why I didn't do it sooner, to be honest. Um, if anyone has an uh, aspiration to go on vacation somewhere like in the mountains and you want complete beauty, I would say go to um, Alberta or British Columbia and go to Banff. It's, it's gorgeous. But My decision for going there, I just wanted to change. Um, I was in Boston for eight years. The Olympics happened. We just won gold. And I said, eh, let's just, let's spice it up a bit. Let's go to Calgary. And <laughs> why not? We had the option. So one of our good friends, Carson Duggan, she was already, her family lived up there. She knew the area. 
she was planning on moving back there. And so we kind of all said, let's just go and live there and we'll play in the C-dub and um, hopefully make the team. We couldn't go to tryouts though. So that I really felt bad about that because I think we had a wet Megan Duggan's wedding and then Kelly Stack's wedding. And I was in Megan's and I, I couldn't make tryouts. And I, I hate that. <laughs> I'm like on a team. In case I think I think you were fine. I think you were. Think you were okay. They took like, one look at your name. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. like this is the person she is. <laughs> no. She's all heart and all like intensity and needs to prove like that she deserves to be on that team. But let's be honest, I do. you made it. Okay, I do. As soon as you said I'm going to Calgary, they said, "Yep, yeah, Infernos, come on, come on, play with us." <laughs> <laughs> but no, That's, keep going. No. Sorry. <laughs> No, no, you're fine. But it's true. Like, I just, I really felt bad about that aspect because I, I'm going to a brand new team and they don't even know me, but I'm not even trying out. So I really needed to go in there and prove myself, but everyone was so welcoming. And I was obviously playing against all these Canadians were rivals. And a lot of those Canadians on the team, I did not know personally. Um, so it was very interesting and helpful to get to know them on a more personal slash training competitive basis like Blair Turnbull didn't really know her knew of her but I loved her compete level I loved her preparation I just loved everything she brought and it elevated my game because I always wanted to step on the ice and try to be as good as her or better and always wanted to be the hardest worker on the ice and with the group that we had um, it, it was it was difficult because we had a lot of great players <laughs> and for those of you that have seen Bell's play like Cax and I were talking about this before, uh, you know, before we had you on here just now, but like you are probably the most intimidating player that I've ever seen on the ice. Part of it is the wow. bubble. So I can see your entire like <laughs> soul in those eyes, but I met you after off the ice, uh, you know, at the CW all-star game. And at, uh, I think we did like a eight nations tournament where we were like kind of mixed teams, like different, different countries on each team. Anyways, mm -hmm. I met you there and I was like, oh my God, Bells is like the sweetest person, like <laughs> probably in the women's game. So what was it like, what was it like to now be playing with some of the girls that frankly, if they were wearing the other Jersey, you would just have no Correct mercy. With. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just the cliche of, you know, no matter what Jersey you put on that, that's your teammate for that game, that year, that season. So that's how I went at it. Um, I don't care if we're rivals when it comes to Canada, USA, because as soon as I throw that Jersey on, I'm not going to like you. And <laughs> when we go back to Calgary though, we're going to go grab a drink and we're going to be on the same team and have a blast on the plane rides and on the bus rides home. And that's just how it was. And I feel like that's just, it's an amazing culture that you can have such a heated rivalry, but then, you know, go experience playing on these teams with girls that you absolutely just want to demolish, but then you, <laughs> learn so much about them as a person and a player and you just become a better person for doing it. So I, I love my decision. That's awesome. For those of you that maybe are just getting to know Casey, um, Noxie and I kind of talked about it, but she's always in the mix. She's always in the, like you're about to go by her or something and there's a hip or a shoulder or something <laughs> to the face or whatever. So, um, when Not the yeah. face, um, there's a couple Just of we're short, we're so short, little, so wash. <laughs> you got the yeah, face wash going and all that. Like she's just, um, she's tough to play again. So like I can see, and I, I, I can, I'm, I, I'm going to say I got hit by you and you're pretty freaking darn <laughs> solid. There's another times that I, we went at it and then we both looked at each other and I was like, no, let's just, <laughs> just and walk away. Let's yeah. walk away. Yeah. Cax, Cax is no angel on the ice. Yeah. Oh, I'm I am out there. such an angel. <laughs> what do you mean? This is going to be a regular chirp. occurring topic. How Cax know, is like a goon on the ice. Okay. So <laughs> not a goon. <laughs> not a goon. I, no, no. I can uh, take it. That's goon. why people freaking yeah. do it. God, She's intense. Let's say. Yeah. Okay. So 130 games with the national team. That's, I, that. I was saying that's probably more than I played in my entire career. <laughs> I definitely dressed for 130, <laughs> but is there a team in that time that like stands out for you? When you look back at your 15 years, like, is there a team that you're just like, man, if I could replicate the perfect hockey team, this would be it. These are the people that are on it or personalities and why? Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a tough question because there's so many different personalities in hockey and, you, and on all different teams. But when it comes to the national team and playing with team USA, I, I would have to say my first Olympics was my most fun. And 
yeah, you know, you, you play and you'll learn a lot and you turn into a leader and you get competitive and then you're serious. But I loved that 2010 year because my best friends were on it, like Kelly Stack, Erica Lawler, Megan Duggan. We had an absolute blast. We lived in like this six bedroom house that people were like, sure, you can pay like 300 bucks each um, in Minnesota. And we're like, this is amazing. We had like a little (laughs) couch that only two people could sit on. The twins lived with us that year. (laughs) And it was just an absolute time. Like I loved every second of it. I didn't have my license. So we're all (laughs) carpooling. What? I didn't get my license till I was 22. I know that's a different story, but <laughs> I would just- like to know that story. <laughs> we'll get back to that, yeah. but keep going about the, the house and the girls. I love that. Six yeah. of you, one house, six of us. But yeah, I mean, I lived in the master bedroom with Kelly stack. We had uh, this huge hot tub jacuzzi that we never <laughs> used, but it was just so fun being with those girls. They're on, they're my best friends. Like we still keep in contact today, but the laughs that we had, nothing will compare to that year. Um, what's, uh, what's the nickname for that group? The Sal's or the Babs or the Tishes. There's so many <laughs> names that were very annoying. Anyone out there, I understand, but you, you gotta it have is what those it is. inside jokes with people. That's what makes life fun. I, I love that. Out of those, those three, I guess, or the four of you guys, who's the funniest? Kelly. Oh yeah. Kelly stack. People would say like, she's probably like obnoxiously funny, but I like, I feed off of her personality (laughs) and like, we're not afraid to tell each other like, or call each other out. Like none of us. And I think that that's the best part. Like we can just say whatever we want to each other, but Kelly will give it to you straight. I'll tell you that. (laughs) I thought Lawler would be up there. I thought she was going to be the next stand up like comedian or something. No, she, they're all so funny though. That's the best part. (laughs) How did you get there? I don't know. I think that was a quiet one. You got to have balance, right? Exactly. You have to have the good, like the public, like the guy or the girl that laughs the, at all the jokes. So I got it. I'm, right. I'm well, down. that's why the twins, we brought the twins in to live with us because they laughed at everything. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. How How is that living with them? Actually, we alluded to oh, them a little bit phenomenal. playing against that. I think they're awesome, but yeah. How, how they're are new they? Tri- they're new. Nutrition definitely improved over the years. We were swapping uh, grape soda, um, <laughs> Count Dracula, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Our nutrition was terrible in 2010. And I think as we grew, obviously, and learned, um, we we knew what we were doing by the end of our career. But I don't regret those Mi- beginning years. <laughs> Mix some greens into that diet and uh, like maybe Call a water balance. here there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. I love that. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay. So let's get to some of our like kind of uh, rapid fire questions, if you will. Um, All right. Take as much time or as little as you'd like on the answers though. I'll go first. Okay. Uh, you're stuck in an escape room and you can choose one teammate to help you out. Who and why? Oh, I would probably say Molly Shouse because she would just know exactly how to get out. She knows <laughs> everything. Yeah. Goalie. Hey, Um, (laughs) there's two kinds. (laughs) Okay. Um, you can either score the game winning goal or block the shot that saves the game. Which do you choose? Which one? Oh, I've done the blocking of the shot. So I want to score a goal because I've never done that to win a game. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I like it. I like it. Just as important. Okay. Steak or pasta? Steak. Good answer. Okay. Goalies are weird, right? We all know this, <laughs> but uh, who was your weirdest and grungiest or whatever teammates? Of what does grungiest like, mean? What like, is no, that? Weirdest. That's <laughs> probably my French quirky <laughs> is what I was trying to say, but like teammates that you had over the years. So don't make fun of my French and answer the question. <laughs> I'm not going to say like weird, like, but <laughs> just very unique. Gigi like Marvin. That. Oh, she would okay. literally get into the locker room. Everyone's dressed and ready to go on the ice for warmups. <laughs> She's coming to the locker room with their undergear on. Oh, like just no pressure, no anxiety. Gets dressed out there before everyone. Oh, uh, wait. Uh, yeah. That's like grab awesome. it and just gets a just what? I think she just has this full suit. She just throws on. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. There, but everything's just zip tied together and she just kind of slides into it. Good yeah. to go. But she is one of the most unique, but also one of the most like genuine, passionate teammates I ever had. So I just loved her ever, seeing her every single day brought a smile to my face. Oh, that's cute. I love her. Yeah. Okay. 
your Rob, your brother Rob is a country oh, yeah. music artist. You are tasked with creating a women's hockey band. Who's in it? Do they play instruments or is this like more of like a pop girl band? You can have like, let's say three or four people. Who's in your band? Okay. So I'd probably go with Kelly Stack because she knows rap. So we have to get all <laughs> the genres in there. Right. Um, and she's entertaining. Uh, Megan Duggan, I'd say, because she has a great voice. Erica Lawler, because she's a great dancer. And mm, uh, maybe I'd go with Brianna Decker, because if I didn't say her, she'd probably get mad at me. <laughs> what is she doing, though? What is she she's in the background with the triangle? <laughs> <laughs> Cannot wait for that band to come out. Oh, okay. God. Seriously. Last one. Uh, you can come back as any one of the rookies on the current U S Olympic team, who are you going to be reincarnated as, and then talk about why we should watch them. Mm. Um, I would say, yeah, I know. I would say, uh, can I say two? Yeah, sure. I'll say two. It's I your show. Say Jin- Jincy Dunn because of all the resilience that she's overcame and finally making her Olympic debut and reaching her dream. And I think she's improved so much as a player over the years. Just incredible. Um, big family, all get along. And she has a great singing voice. So that's a plus. Oh. And then I'd uh, um, probably have to say Haley Skimura. Um, I've the two, three years that we played together, I've just have so much respect for her, her work ethic, her attitude. Um, I think that she's done a phenomenal job this year and playing the role that she has. And um I, I just really, like I said, I, I have a lot of respect for her. That's good. Yeah. I like those. You wouldn't want to come back as like, uh, you know, Abby Murphy and get under people's skins. Or... Yeah. I do like watching her play. I like, yeah, Murph, get in there. Like, so, <laughs> I love it. And I text her after the games, like, I don't care if you get a penalty, like these are the games you need to do that. Just like at the That's Olympics, don't do it as much, but like, do it here. I knew, I knew you, you would, yeah, get fired up by like what she does and everything. So that's why I needed to get it in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I played against her a few times at camp and stuff. I'd tell her like, you better fucking, se- oh, you better settle down. <laughs> yeah, you can <can't> right. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a swearing podcast. So. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you would tell her to settle down. I would. And I would just, but I loved her fire. So, I mean, if you're have a rookie coming in and they're going up to the vets and really like giving it. I love that. I respect that. Just like, don't be cheap about it. And like, just, you know, know when in, to do it. But yeah, I, I love it. Oh, no, and watch yourself it. in the corners. Cause I'm coming for you. Well, yeah, cause you're <laughs> going to get it back. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You got to expect it. If you can, right. if you can give it, you got to know. Right? Oh, of course. You know, you got to take important it too. part. Yeah, for sure. Amazing. Um, I was going to ask one thing and one last question. Um, I don't know if our listeners know this, but uh, you have like a secret talent right? Like Ooh. hidden talent per se. Um, and somehow Liz and I both have an edit or an edition of this, but, um, Oh yeah. Casey Bellamy writes poems or is a writer in terms of I've read your letters. They're always re- well written and it's beautiful and, and stuff. And I was just curious to what letters used, where you, you read keep, them. You wrote one. Ah. You wrote one. <laughs> I got one as a friend. Yes, I did. I, I don't, I, oh, I didn't keep nice. it. Sorry. But yeah, um, I just, I'm curious. Do you still write? Is it still part of your daily kind of uh, stuff uh, where you journal or you write poems or anything like that? I I'm do like, journal. Yeah. I don't write as much as I would like to anymore. Um, I think that was going through a time in my life where it was just so passionate and things just were coming out and I had the time to do it. Um, yeah. but I, I have thought about getting more so back into it and I thought about writing another book. Um, but I, I, I wanted to do it. It's something I was passionate about from like 2011 to when I, uh, published it and it was my like time. It was like my sanctuary. It was my refocus time, my time away from hockey. And then, you know, I'd wake up the next morning and it's back to work. But that was, that was my downtime. And I just, I I'm proud of it. And it wasn't to make money or anything. It was just for me to, you know, look at it and feel accomplished about writing poetry. 
You should. It's a good and one. I like it. And that's exactly what this podcast is all about. Learning that these athletes are more than just the product you see on the ice. You're obviously an incredible leader, uh, you know, intelligent, an impact player on and off the ice. So we want to thank you so much for your time. I hope it's not the last time we have you on. I think you'd be, you know, a great addition when we're analyzing games and getting to know some of the U.S. players. So Case, thanks so much again for your time. And uh, yeah, tune in on Thursday for our next episode of Noxie and Cax brought to you by SDPN and the PWHPA. That's my radio voice. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Case. Thanks, Pleasure guys. I appreciate you. it. The Noxie and Cax Show on SDPN, produced in partnership with the PWHPA. Follow Noxie and Cax on Twitter at 27Noxie and at CareLMR. The views expressed are those of the individuals and are not necessarily those of the PWHPA. Check out SDPN.ca for more Noxie and Cax and the rest of the SDPN crew. She scores!